why do people listen to sad music? Um, I mean, one reason is they're hearing expressed for them. Like the musician is basically saying to them, this thing that you have experienced, I've experienced it too, so have lots of other people. And But they're saying it all without words and it's transformed into something beautiful. And there's something about that that's just incredibly elevating. And people don't know it, but... Like there's one study that I have in in Bittersweet that found that people whose favorite songs are their happy songs play it on their playlists about 175 times, but the people who love sad music play them about 800 times. <laughs> <laughs> and then and they say that they feel connected to the sublime when when they're listening to that music. What what do you think that is? So what is that? What what is it in music that connects us? to the sublime through sadness? I mean, I have a bunch of different theories. Like, uh, the whole reason I started writing this book is because I kept having this reaction reliably to sad music. And I realized that for people who I knew who were religious believers, the way they described their experience of God was what I was experiencing when I would hear that music. <laughs> and, like, all the time. It happens over and over again. So it, you you wonder what that is. And yeah, so I started wondering what that is. Um, and lots of people have tried to figure out, you know, what that's all about. Um, and there are different theories that it's expressing. It's like a kind of catharsis for our difficult emotions. Um, that it's, as we were saying, a sense of being in it together. We don't react in that sort of uplifted way when you just see. Um, like a, a slideshow of sad faces, which is something researchers have actually tested. <laughs> no one really cares when they're seeing the slide of the sad faces, but the sad music, they're really reacting. And, and also they don't really react when they're hearing music expressing other negative emotions, you know, like martial music or something like that. It's just the sad music that gives people this elevated sense of wonder. So I think it's the combination of the sadness and the beauty. And I think it's just tapping into the essence of the human source code, which is a kind of spiritual longing. Whether we're atheists or believers, there's this feeling of longing for a state and a place of perfect love and perfect unity and perfect truth and all of it. And, and like an acute awareness that we're not there in this world. And, you know, in religions, we express that through the longing for Mecca or, or Eden or Zion. And artistically, we express it with Dorothy longing for somewhere over the rainbow or, you know, Harry Potter mm -hmm. enters the story at the precise moment that he's become an orphan. Um, so he's now going to spend the rest of his life longing for these parents who he can never remember. And that's, there's something about that state that's at our very core. And I think that's why we love it so much. Well, it could be, you know, you could have the Ernest Becker theory of uh, denial of death, where at the core of that, the warm at the core as Jung said, is the uh, fear of death. So where the longing for the perfect thing is has to do with sort of becoming immortal, is uh, reaching beyond the, the absurdity, the cruelty of life, that all things come to an end for, for, for no particularly good reason whatsoever, <laughs> or one we can rationally explain. I know, you know, I wonder about that all the time. Like, I know obviously there's that idea um, from Becker and throughout philosophy and the tale of Gilgamesh about the idea that the thing we're longing for most of all is immortality. But I feel like it's not only that. I think it's more so or also, let's say, um, a longing for the lions to lay down with the lambs, finally. You know, for like the the fundamental calculus of the universe to just be different, where life doesn't have to eat life in order to survive. And yeah, just a completely different situation. I wonder. That, that immortality would not solve. I wonder. That could be a very kind of uh, modern thing. Because oh, surely so much of human history is defined by violence and glorified violence that doesn't give inklings of this lions and the lambs. Sh so much of 
Yeah, we, I mean, I know all may, the other stuff is in the Bible too. Yeah, there's other stuff in the Bible, and sure. the Bible is necess- that particular aspect doesn't necessarily reveal the fundamental motivation of human nature. There could be deeper stuff, you know. But that, yeah, that is a beautiful that is a beautiful picture. But is it just about humans, or is it all about about all of life? And you have to think about what is the perfect world look like. It's not just the lions and the lambs laying together. It's, you know, how many lions and how many lambs? Right, right. And, uh, you know, what, <laughs> having just had a few uh, very technical conversations about Marxian economics versus Keynesian economics versus neoclassical economics, what what does the economic and the government system look like for the lions and the lambs <laughs> that we're longing for? <laughs> So that then you start to build society on top of all those things, and you, but you still you return to this. What what is it? What are we longing for? And what's the role of love in that? What's the role of that sad, melancholy feeling? The feeling of loneliness is the feeling of loneliness fundamental to the human condition? Like, are we always striving to sort of uh, channel that feeling of loneliness? Um, to connect with others, like we want that feeling of loneliness, otherwise we wouldn't be connecting. Is that fundamental? That feeling like you're alone in this, even when you're with other people, sort of alone together. You're born alone, you die alone. Maybe loneliness is fundamental. I think the longing for a union is fundamental. It's just that it looks so different for different people, you know? Right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and coming back sure. to where we were, what we were talking about at the beginning, you know, Union looks incredibly social for a lot of people and hardly social at all for others, but everybody needs some version of union. 